What would happen if Pixar stopped making animated classics like Finding Nemo, Toy Story and Up? Sorry, Luca fans, but it just wasn't good at all. And turned their attention to a city builder. The answer is this beautifully animated game set within a fairy tale universe full of dragons, beanstalks and a disembodied voice that guides you through the first stages of creating a settlement for your new found friends. Welcome, welcome. I'm JJ for FGS and every Thursday we help you discover your new favourite game. But as with all fairy tales, we should start at the beginning. This is Fabledom, a rather chill city builder where the basic goal is to grow your settlement, taking it from your first homestead in the middle of a forest into a sprawling city full of bakeries, street theatre stages, lighthouses and roads that look better than some earth somebody's lazily moved around with half a shovel. You start by choosing whether you want to play in standard mode, where you have to build and manage your kingdom, explore the realm to find secrets and forge relationships with other nobles, this is the one I picked, or creative mode, where everything is unlocked, there are no construction times and you can focus fully on being creative. Wait, that sounds way better. Anyway, once you've chosen the wrong game mode and picked the area of the randomly generated map you want to start your settlement in, you're free to plonk down your first homestead, invariably in a place that you'll come to regret later, and set about creating the, the best, best kingdom, kingdom in the world. In the world. One of the standout things in Fabledom is that even if you pick the standard mode, there's very little, at least in the early stages, that's going to throw you off track. You're pretty much left alone to place extra housing, wells, farms, lumber camps and taverns to your heart's content, welcoming new villagers as you go and assigning them jobs to keep the whole thing ticking over. In fact, I only found my stress levels rising when I wanted to expand my housing district because if you don't have neat little areas for each of the different types of buildings, what are you even doing? But I couldn't because I'd put a farm in the middle of the town. Or when I somehow managed to run out of wood, so I couldn't build anything, which I thought might have had something to do with the placement of the lumber mill, so I destroyed it and moved it to somewhere else. But to rebuild it, I needed, yeah, you guessed it, wood, which I didn't have because I had destroyed the lumber mill, which was responsible for making the wood. Honestly, it was a nightmare and my town is still suffering with wood production to this day. The editor has made a note here for me to explain to you what exactly I did wrong so you don't have the same problems. But if I knew that, I wouldn't have had the problems in the first place, would I? I genuinely don't know, but it probably was my fault. However, it's very easy to get over those early dramas thanks to the beautifully relaxing soundtrack that washes through your village. And what's more is that you can either command your new village friends from on high or zoom down onto street level and watch everyone go about their daily lives as the seasons change from spring to summer to winter and back again. These moments of just sitting and watching the townsfolk as birds sing in the background could almost be a scene from a Pixar movie. Or you could at least put a few of them together to make a pretty sweet trailer. Meet Bill, just a normal fisherman. Then one day he found a magic beanstalk that would change his life forever. Bill and the Beanstalk, coming 2024 or never. Then last Pixar call me. See, pretty sweet. Once you've made your village big enough, it will start to garner the attention of other rulers in the kingdom who will send you messages, requests for supplies, and in some cases, offers of alliances. Turning these down doesn't have any negative impact, but accepting and completing them will get you some extra coin or notoriety, which you'll need for later quests. Speaking of quests, let me introduce you to Fergus. In Fabledom, each settlement has a hero, and these are the strongest fighters in the village, or in my case, the only fighter. Heroes get their own tent in the village and can be used to interact with secrets in the realm. They can be leveled up and even given items to buff certain stats. It's another thing that sets Fabledom apart from the other more traditional city builders and really adds to the fairy tale aspect of the game, especially when you get to send them off on quests, climbing magic beanstalks that have appeared in your village. Completing one of these quests can unlock special items like this beautiful lighthouse for my tiny lake? Better safe than sorry, I guess. Be warned, however, because your hero can perish in battle. But it's actually okay, because like all good heroes, they can be resurrected for a small handful of coins. Meaning as long as you have the cash, you can send them off to die and die again. Which admittedly is something you might not find in a Pixar movie. When I first started playing Fabledom, it was in early access. But over the past year, the team have been adding continual updates and new features to the game to make sure it was ready for its 1.0 release, which you can pick up on Steam right now. 
now, with console versions also on the horizon for Q3 2024. This really has become my game of choice for when I just want to switch off, relax, and get lost in my little fantasy realm. At a time where we're being bombarded with glory kills, thumping bass, and men in space with guns, this is the change of pace I need from time to time. So let me know in the comments what you think of Fabledom, and remember to check back right here on this YouTube channel every Thursday as we help you discover your new favourite game. Also subscribe or I'll level Bill's house to the ground.